guys, gals, non-binary pals, GM Potter here, and for the 13 spooky books of October, today we are doing The Amityville Horror by Jay Anson. Now, this one is the book on which the 1979 movie and the 2005 movie, to a much lesser extent, are based on, which this book is a true crime novel, true, oh, true crime style book um, based on the actual accounts of the Lutz family following the DeFeo murders. I say that because, well, we'll get into it. So, in 1975, uh, the Lutz family moved into their huge, huge suburban house. I'm talking four bedrooms with a finished basement and a finished attic. Like, this place is huge. It's on a big lot. It's got a boat slip. Like, it's huge. They only paid $80,000 for it in 1975, which inflation is horrible. Because my, my house is absolutely tiny, and I paid uh double more than double that like almost two and a half times that actually exactly two and a half times that for a book that for a sorry for a house that's like maybe a third the size of, for the house and the the lot is like also a third the size like it's no it's it's sad anyway it's a four bedroom fully for the house comes with furniture like because the defeo family is was murdered. It was a six family murder. Both the parents and four of their children were murdered by Ronnie DeFeo earlier that year. Um, that's frankly the scariest part of the book is the bit about inflation. Um, the family only stayed there 28 days before fleeing. Was it because the house was haunted? Was it the devil? As an in, was it because it was built on a Native American burial ground? Or, as a lot of the evidence outside the book suggests, was it a ploy to escape money and legal woes? So, the reason why I hesitate to call this book true crime or anything of like that is that at some point, almost everyone involved has recounted or changed, recanted or changed their story. Almost everybody has. So it's it's seen as like this chilling true story that it really happened, but more than likely, with the exception of the DeFeo murders, which actually did happen, and we don't know for sure if that was because the house was haunted or the devil or the Native American burial grounds or any of that, or more likely because Ronnie DeFeo was mentally ill, and this was the 70s, so there wasn't good mental health care. Um, aside from that, Everything about this is, is fake and is fiction and is just silly. The book even contradicts itself. Like, the most glaring... There, there's several contradictions, but the one that everybody points out is uh, in the prologue on, like, page two, I think it is. They It says they move in on December 23rd. And, like, four pages later in the first chapter, it says they move in on December 18th. And the layout of the rooms changes in the telling of the story from the diagrams of the rooms... Like, there, there's, there, there's a lot of things that just don't, frankly, don't make sense in the book. And um, George and Kathleen Lutz had a lot of money woes that is gotten into in the book, but it's kind of hand waved across as this is a, oh well, he was de he was under demonic forces, so he couldn't make payroll not because he didn't have the money, but because of this and the demons in the house stole. The money for the caterer, so he had to pay the caterer out of his own pocket. So of course he couldn't make payroll because of demons! And it's like... Or maybe he was just bad with money and shouldn't be in charge of money. Did anyone stop to think about that? And it's like... There's a bit about uh, auditory hallucinations. It's, it's auditory hallucinations more than uh, visual hallucinations are talked about in the book. Um, there's like a demon pig with glowing red eyes that goes by the name Jody. Um, there's a full marching band that wakes uh, George Lutz up in the middle of the night and when he goes downstairs, there's no marching band. Ooh. And it's like, so you're scared of marching bands? Is, is, is that a real fear? Like I was in marching band. It's the, the, the scariest part was the mild hazing, but even that wasn't, wasn't bad. Like. So, 
Anyway, the book is taken from uh, interviews, taped interviews with George and Kathy Lutz and some others, including the priest. Um, and it starts off as what you'd expect a true crime book to be. Honestly, it's it's boring. The book is boring. Like, like I said, the scariest thing is the inflation. Um, if you want a scare for the Amityville house, uh, watch the 1979 movie with Brolin and Margot Kidder and just skip the book. Also skip the 2005 version with Ryan Reynolds because it's bad. It's just bad. It's yeah. Watch the 1979 movie version. It's a great movie. It's a, does a good job of telling the story. It's very atmospheric in a way that it makes you want to believe. And I think that's the, the biggest thing about this book is that so many people wanted to believe in something extraordinary, something otherworldly, something supernatural, that they bought the book and they bought into the hype. And it's like, it's quite clearly fake. It's quite clearly made up and nonsensical and BS, honestly. So have you read the Amityville Horror? Did you watch either of the movies? What did you think? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!